Vaishali, uh, generally I have like an introduction. I tell all the viewers about what you have achieved and so on. But today I want to get straight to the chessboard and I want to ask you about this position that you had in the final round of the tournament uh, at the Turkish league. You are white here and I want to understand the way you think. What were you thinking here as white uh, before your next move? Because you know the move that comes to me very naturally is just move the rook, put pressure here, something like that. Yeah, uh, hello Sagar and uh, yeah, this was the last game of the tournament and our team had already won and uh, yeah, I was just enjoying this game and playing. Uh, I spent a lot of time here I think and I was trying to come up with a plan. So I thought uh, I should be playing on the king side like blacks, this queen side is kind of fixed with this b6, a5 and uh, I think black has to play b5, b4. Like I had just played queen d2 previous move I think. She had played b6 and uh, yeah, uh, I forced her to go king h7 and uh, I think I spent some time on queen d2, I think. Mm -hmm. So there I saw this plan of playing this h4 and... Uh, what is the point of h4? Like, are you planning to go h5, force g5 and then what? Yeah, uh, I can, if I can force g5 then I can play queen c2 or queen d3 and to play knight f5 and like I can go f4 also in some case. Mm. Yeah, it's actually a questioning yeah whether she i mean she has to play h5 and we can the g5 square or to allow me to play h5 uh it's also not easy uh, on the board i think so, so it was more of a questioning decision so i just played you you questioned her uh put her with a tough question she did play h5 and this turned into the critical sort of thing which helped you at the end to win the game so let's go to that moment because it was this position um, and it's very, very interesting uh, that here you are better but not winning and she played this move Rook C4. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, actually a few moves, few moves ago it got repeated, the position got repeated. Okay. Like on the 40th move, uh, we both were in time trouble and this position like I played my 40th move I think queen e3 or something oh but and you I, know you went from here and there so maybe she thought uh, no actually she uh, okay I left the board after making my 40th move and uh, after, like she was also playing on seconds and she made her move and uh, apparently like I got to know later that uh, she had climbed after making the move oh uh, so she and, claimed it in the wrong way she should have yeah. first written her move not okay, she time. was low on clock, so I think she climbed after the move and Arbiter said you have to climb it before. Then after that, I got my 30 minutes and I spent some time. I thought maybe I could just continue right. because it's not easy for her. Like, I have this G4 option, her king is a bit weak. Maybe I have some tricks to still play on. So, I played this rook D4. Uh, so you... Yeah, actually, when she played bishop C2 itself, like, I spent a lot of time on queen C1 and I saw, like, this was forced I mean, queen yeah. C1. Bishop so, B3. So Rook D4, Bishop C2. Yeah, I missed Bishop C2 when I played Rook D4. But uh, from here on, I saw this oh, old plan. Like I can go for this Knight E4, Queen X6 trick. Like if Bishop goes to this diagonal. Like here she's threatening Bishop D5 and I have to play Queen D2. Here, I thought Rook C5 or Rook A5 is critical. Like Rook C5 is more so natural like to attack D5 pawn. And I get this Knight E4. So yeah, Rook D5 is not possible because of Rook B3. So now if she takes here... You remove one of the defenders and you are completely winning. Yeah, so, like b4, rook b7, the d2 queen is supported with the knight. Uh, right. So this Seven. is completely winning for you. And so she played rook here. Yeah. And this, how how easy or tough is this combination? Uh, like I want I want the viewers to maybe pause the video and think here. Uh, do you think it was uh, easy for you to figure out? Uh, I was very happy to find, I don't know, like it just came, like the king looked weak and for a long time I was trying this g4 idea, my pieces were yeah. so ready to yeah. jump into any time, so uh, yeah, I think everything, like all my pieces were just perfectly placed for this combination. So take is the first important move, now she must take with the queen, otherwise the rook is hanging, so take with the queen and now this 
very nice move jumping in with the queen and after take here knight g5 this is such a uh, great variation to show when the king is weak just over it's a forced mate yeah actually i could not go direct queen h6 because the queen b7 was i think uh, helping to defend you mean like here yeah um, i think rook d4 and uh, she gets d4. this e6 move where f7 is supported like not knight g uh, like rook h4, king g3, and e6. Maybe. Ah, maybe e6, e5, something. Yeah, e6, e5, and f7 is supported. So it's very important to start with rook b3. Mm -hmm. So the, the move rook b3 is kind of deflection from the f7 point. Very, very deep, very nice. And maybe one of your uh, pretty combinations that you have played so many now, but uh, this adds to one more of them. Yeah, I was happy to find this one as well. Absolutely. I want to tell the viewers on uh, what you've managed to achieve uh, recently. You were playing at the Turkish League for the team of Turkish Airlines. And this is what you managed to do. You scored 9 points out of 11. Unbeaten, 4 draws, 7 wins. Phenomenal score there. And you won the gold medal uh, on your board. Also, your team managed to win um, the trophy. And I think it's a very special thing for you, Vaishali, because uh, this was your first ever league over the board. Isn't it true? Yeah, yeah this is my first ever league. And uh, I got like a few days before the tournament, few weeks before the tournament. Uh, I was not planning to play any tournament in this month. And when I, this came, I was thinking uh, also like a little bit, playing tournament without Preg or my mother. I'll have to go alone. So I was thinking, then I thought, okay, Viditana and Gugesh are in the same team. Maybe I could just try, like, okay, it's my first league and what better way to start it. So I thought, okay, I'll agree and I played and uh, yeah, it was very nice. I was uh, very happy to play alongside with them. Like, Chaparino was in the same team and it was very nice. I really enjoyed it. You, you enjoyed it and also... Your uh, is this like the first ever time outside India that you've gone uh, to play and your family is not with you, your mother is not with you and maybe not in an official event? Like uh, no, maybe I, the team is there yeah. or something like that? No, I played this uh, last year I went for this. No, this is second tournament I think. Yeah. Okay, only second. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Most and, of the times, Prague plays the same tournaments and uh, there is no way that it could travel. Yeah, but so. this time, Prague was in Hungary. You yeah, were that here. Was, that was planned like uh, months before and mm. that my mother could my mother would go with him. So, uh, so I had to go with your alone. So. Yeah, your mother had a decision to make whether... But okay, it was planned beforehand. Um, and, and you, I got to know that you were uh, cooking your own food and you were, uh, you know... Uh, in your in your room, you had a cooker and so on. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, like uh, I went uh, for the luncheon. I mean, breakfast I would normally have uh, the buffet, but and lunch and dinner I tried for uh, one one day and uh, I did not like it very much. So I was just making rice in the room and having with uh, like a get curd and uh, having with all this podi and everything. Oh. Was that enough? Like. For, to to give you nutrition for such a long tournament uh, i somehow managed to survive this tournament but uh, yeah it won't help in long run hmm. i mean i can't do this for many tournaments like one tournament it's okay right right and and uh, tell us about your team owners you know i got to know that after you won they they gave you all business class tickets to travel back home. That would be special. No? I mean, of, of course, it's Turkish Airlines. So they are into that. But uh, it was nice gesture by them. Yeah, thanks to the team, like uh, Captain Akan and Emre manager. Like, uh, they are very nice. Like, for me, I was hesitating to play this tournament because they are like very new people. I don't know what I will do. But they were really nice and uh, like even during the tournament, like they would wish the best and mm. uh, like I was, whenever I asked for something, they were like some water bottle, like bananas, like anything they would just uh, arrange wow. us immediately, like for all the team. And uh, last day when, like this is the first time the Turkish Airlines is winning the tournament and uh, uh, after winning, like the last day, they uh, they announced us that uh, they would give us the business class. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it was very nice of them to do this. 
That's so nice. That's so nice. It, it's the first time that Turkish Airlines won. Yes, the the yes. Turkish league. Yeah. That is that is huge, and I think you played such a such a critical role uh, in that. I want to also see a few more games with you. Uh, let's go to another game. This one was round number one. Uh, you were playing against Narmin Mamadova, and here you played Bishop B five. A very interesting tactical move, uh, very much in your style. Did how much did you see here? Like this was the first round, and uh, I was worse out of ten moves. I think I yes. was just I was in a bad position out of ten moves. And okay, I thought like first round, I'm, I just played London system, and I allowed this f six g five option. Like my opponent, I think didn't play knight f six, and uh, I allowed this. Like I knew, but somehow over the board, I think I just allowed. And black was already better, and I landed, and I just kept playing. Uh, I think I was lucky that this bishop b five trick was there, but uh, yeah, also you you were I under don't... so much pressure here. Yeah, very much. Uh, like my knight b three is bad, queen a three is bad. I don't know what they are doing there. And also this f four, f three, all of this coming. is coming. Two bishops, uh, like they could get active e very easily. So, but this is this is where your. Uh... Real strength kicked in. You played bishop b five, and uh, she took, which is natural. And here it's very important not to go and take this knight. Yeah, I think uh, because rook e eight, I think. Yeah, rook e eight, and then just f four, and already it's bad because even if you take here, takes takes not, yeah. king at seven. I think this is just uh, big trouble for yeah. for white. So. You found another good move here, which is rook takes e6. Now you are hitting here, and also here. Yes, uh, I think uh, black's main best move was rook f7. No, what was the black's best move? Like yeah, I okay, think rook here, a, e8, uh, rook a8, yeah, and to just give up that pawn and to go f4, f same idea. Exactly. Yeah. Take. But take. Uh, yeah, but uh, on the board, like it was somehow I was also thinking like black has to defend the piece, and I'm getting back one something like that. I didn't realize that uh, this giving up the pawn and pushing f4 f3 would be very strong. Right. And also, like the position where black added, now the the characteristic has changed. Like it has become a bit more complicated. Like earlier, like it was like very positional edge, and now yes. black has to find this sacrifice and to go f4. I think that put her, my opponent on the spot. Like she she played rook f7 and she played this. And actually, here how easy was it to see? Because you played it in just ninety seconds, not to take this knight, because then it would lead to similar position, you know, like take, take, and then um, maybe f four, but also like queen here, and then maybe preparing this, and f four would be very strong. So how easy was it for you to see this move? I think this rookie son, I did not uh, really consider it like that. That would be very dangerous. Like queen d six was more natural for me to consider first. Mm. I think like uh, in that way, like I'm also trading rook g six, rook e seven. Like h six is also in some cases like threatened indirectly, and like all king side is falling apart. Right. Yeah, and once she played here f four, now taking is completely different because the queen is going to chop this bishop. Yeah. And this is winning for you. And you went on to win a very smooth game uh, here. I think such a win is very important, right, to set the tone for the entire event. Yeah, this was I think important, like to start with a win. Uh, Absolutely. Going to another game, which was also uh, very interesting. This one was, I think, the second round game, and here. Uh, I mean, you were better out of the opening. You were pressing. You had double bishops. Very nice position. But this was uh, you took a very interesting decision to give up your strong bishop for the knight. Did you yeah, feel but... uh, that this was incorrect afterwards, or? Yeah, this was bad actually. Like uh, I did not realize this rook of eight and to keep the position would be would give me so much edge. I thought I'm giving up the d5 square, like knight d5. Okay, I sit with d4 and my opponents get this d5 square and I didn't know what it is. Like, okay, she can start with rook f1 and play knight d5 next. Yes. So, I on the board, I didn't know what is this. Like, should I allow this d5 square uh, 
just like that yeah mm-hmm. i don't know what i'm getting in return so for me i just wanted to take bishop e3 and to play but uh, i think this was better for black like uh, i think i just play push the pawns on the king side and it's not easy like whenever white gets knight d5 and i can play rook f5 and double the rook on f5 i like change the structure in case and Ah, okay and also yeah. like so this is what you think and also there is always this possibility of yeah. pushing a4 right yeah i have the chance like i can open up whenever i want like white doesn't have a real pawn breaks like mm. uh actually what you faced right now is a problem that many people faced even i used to face when i was playing that somehow a knight in the center looks very strong but this knight is not doing much right Yeah, exactly. I should have. I mean, I should. That is the thing you have to realize it on mm. the board. Yeah, like knight d five is just sitting. Like it's just no, it's doing nothing. Right. Not even like controlling any piece or attacking a pawn. Like it's doing nothing. So <laughs> yeah, that is the thing to learn. <laughs> Absolutely. So you took here, took here, and then went up. And I think it was a very important move here for your opponent to find, uh, which yeah, would have I... given her good chances to hold. Yeah, I saw this uh, during the game, and I I was hoping that she should not play this because it's just like you you just see the move and make, and it's just draw. Right. Let's let's uh, ask the viewers to pause and think what should White do here. Uh, it's a important move, and Vaishali, what what was that move that she could have played? Yeah, like Rook D five is the move. Absolutely. Actually, Black the King E five. Black is threatening to play Rook D four and to double the rooks. Mm. Uh, Yeah, if you spot that, I think this rook d5 comes immediately. Like it's like once you see opponent's idea, this move yeah. you find mm-hmm. nice. Rook d5, rook d5, c d5, king d5, and then maybe rook d1. D1 and rook d7. Like rook is getting active and right. So she went uh, rook c1, and after rook d4, I think then it was not so difficult for you to win. Uh, no, I think there was one more trick. Like, uh, can okay. you go few? You need to rook d eight. Okay. Actually, I could go rook d eight. Uh, I did not see see the trick yet. Still, so I was just waiting with rook d eight. Uh, you mean what is the trick? I mean, I can start with rook d eight. Uh, okay, I just played rook d eight. Yeah. I thought I'll have this a four as a threat or something. Uh, yeah, with c six here, I have important to see play rook c seven. Like white was threatening to play c seven and to rook c four. Okay. Like substitute to play king d five. Uh, white goes c seven. If king b six, then rook c four. Mm. I'm losing the pawn. Like the pawns get exchanged and it's not easy because uh, my main my main advantage is to have these two central pawns. Correct. So this rook c seven was important to think. Check king here. Now she can't go rook c four. We are game playing d five and take on. Mm-hmm. Very important. So this was the idea which you had uh, not seen, which was to block at c seven, correct? Yeah. If I had seen this, maybe I should I would have started with rook d eight, which is more forcing. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Here takes and now this was straightforward, and you went on to push your pawn towards queen. Okay. So this was the second uh, win in the tournament, and then uh, you had a uh, had few very tough rounds in the tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you were under a lot of pressure. Uh, then you drew with Salimova. You had some chances there to win, but the real uh, next two games are what I wanted to just briefly look at, which shows also your fighting spirit uh, in the tournament against uh, a Atali- Atalik. I think somewhere here you were in big trouble, no? Yeah, again I was lost out of fifteen moves. I think okay. Uh, like we can show that like I missed this knight a four move, which I should have definitely seen. You mean? Uh, uh... I mean, uh, yeah. The whole whatever I was doing was everything was wrong. This a six. Uh, this queen. Like when I played c d four, uh, I missed this knight a four option. So your like, your like, thought was she'll take this. She takes, uh, Like queen d seven, queen d four, I get bishop c five and so on. Like when she took knight d seven, I immediately realized, oh my, b b six is hanging. Like she can go knight a four and what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, you next like bishop c seven. If you go queen d eight, rook c seven is also coming. Rook c seven. I don't know what I'm doing here actually. 
Oh my God! I was feeling so bad for the team. Like this was very important game, and uh, I'm after fifteen moves, I have this first position, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also I I think this was the tough, the most important opponent that in the tournament, right? Your biggest competitor. Yeah. Yes. Uh... So I I I know that at some point Vidit won his game. Yeah. Yeah, which helped for the team. Like every all the boards drew, and he was the only. He beat Korobo. Korobo went. And then it was on your like you both were playing at that yes. point, and then uh, something happened where your opponent just yeah. repeated. Yeah, we both were low on clock, and uh, yeah, at first, like two times she repeated. I thought, okay, she's gaining clock time, and the third time she she repeated. I was surprised, and uh, okay, I did not make this rookie to move, and I I wanted to climb the draw immediately, and I was uh, like, someone was passing behind me, and I was like, arbiter, I was calling, and it was Vidhana who came to check my game. I thought it was arbiter passing, and I was calling him, and uh, yeah, I was checking my game, and uh, then we. Check the. I mean, it got repeated. Yeah, I climbed and it was a draw. I was so relieved that okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm not letting the team down now. So I'm sure your opponent was not at all happy. Yeah, yeah she was very upset. Uh, like I was really lost in the middle game. Like mm. I was two points down. Like before the screen got exchanged and yeah, but I was it, very lucky. It was very uh, good presence of mind from your end because it was move thirty nine. So I'm sure you were under time pressure at this. Yeah, point. we both were low on clock, and uh, I think that's why somewhere she missed that it got repeated. I think. Mm. And this final position is of course still very much better for White. She mm. can play on, and perhaps she could have also won this game. Um, yes. Oh, tell us the story of this final position. Uh, how did you convince your opponent that this or this, did it end yeah. here or there were more moves? No, no, it ended. Yeah. Uh, I already thought I am. I must be worse, definitely. Yeah. Like our king is active. This a pawn, I don't know what is doing, and I'm, my king is not getting on time to d4. At least if it's on d4, I can like she plays king c6. I have this rook c5 check or something. But I think black is a red fast that she gets king c6 and. D four and rook gets sacked too. Mm-hmm. So I just uh, offered her a draw, and she she asked her captain, and I don't know what happened. Like uh, they agreed, and I was so happy again. I'm not letting her down. Uh, I think maybe the move that she thought was that king c six. There is rook b six, right? This is the sort of saving line. Takes and then you take here, and then this one sort of works out to be at least equal. Yeah, I think I saw something, but she had a much better way to play. I think even a pass, I don't know what I was. Yeah, I like, think so. I think this was the move, King D seven, uh-huh. and then suddenly you don't have much to do. Yeah, Black is now threatening to play Rook A five. Uh, yeah, she wants like to. Because earlier Rook A five, Rook B six check was coming, so now Rook A five threat, and if Rook A one, then uh, King C six is there. Yeah. Yeah, just take. By the way, take take, and this is also bad for you. So if you play as you said, rook a one, then now king c six, then king c six, and still the pawn. So actually, yeah, after king d seven, it's a very tough position for you. You don't have a good move. Yeah. Okay. I did not see king d seven, but I already felt it was very difficult. I thought I just offer a draw, and maybe if she accepts, it's my lucky. Uh, yeah, she. Accepts. I I think maybe she was also thinking like if let's say you also make a pass move, let's say king f three, and if she takes, then you have. Like rook b six. Yeah, but this rook a three is there. I hmm. I think I will always be in trouble. Also, also something like this would mean that this end game is also very bad. Like now. yeah, these two connected passes. Hmm. Yeah. Oof. So that was again a big save, but nothing compares to the next save that you made. Yes. Uh, Yeah, it's so many lucky games in this tournament. No, no, this, it's, it's not very... lucky. I think this phase of draws which you made, they were all very uh, dangerous. But okay, tell me. So you are playing with black here. You are on the defensive, and you take here. Did you see that? Okay, rook h three, and just I have to resign. Yeah, this was I think fourteenth move, and uh, oh, what? Mm. Yeah, I, I was already in trouble. Like I. When I played Bishop D5, I didn't see Rook H3, and uh, I played my 48th move, and she also left the board. I also left the board, and when I came back, I immediately realized, okay, it's Rook H3, it's made. I think I have to resign. 
and i made up my mind like it's gone okay anyway i played the whole game bad i was again i had bad position out of 10 was actually in the opening you can show that part like i played this knight a7 uh this is well known so theory moves. right yeah no i know the theory. like uh, the main move is bishop b6 uh, white bishop castles b6. and black plays knight a7 like if long castle then knight b4 and there are some interesting lines if short castle knight a7 is the move i i know this and i played some of this knight a7 so fast like when she played bishop b5 and uh, this is bad like bishop a7 rook a7 and uh, like this is a this is a reputation for this line for the ail oh, sorry this is a reputation for this uh, line like for the early knight a7 your white goes long castle and there is no way uh, i don't have this d5 break or i don't have anything to play actually so so explain me that if in positions after bishop e6 long castle uh black does not go knight a7 yeah you have this knight b4 a4 there are a lot of ideas like knight b4 i'm threatening d5 sometimes knight a2 and a4 okay yeah. got it and and if you go short castle here let's say after bishop b5 bishop e6 and short castle then knight a7, a7 why would this position Ah, because now uh, the rook is not on d1. Yes, is that the point? Yeah, or? that is one, and also with the white king long castle, like I don't have really attack on the queen side, and white has a free attack. Like as in the game, she got this g4, g5, ah, and this attack nothing, is like, so. This yeah, is not there not, anymore. Yeah, I could not do anything on the queen side, and she just played on the king side. Yeah. Got it. Here, I sometimes have d5 break, and uh, yeah, this is another game. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah, here you can play normally. I think this is a very important point you mentioned that if the king was here, you can use your kingside pawns much more freely. Yes. Uh, so in the game, she did use her pawns very well, and she kind of pushed you back completely. And then, as you said, on the fortieth move, you took here, and this was the killer blow. If the threat is to take on h7, king h7, and queen h4 mate. so she she would have had to resign here i mean you would have had to resign but she took here and i think you what, what did you feel then are you still losing or you thought now this is there is chance uh, i saw queen e3 and uh, okay it's, uh, there are just like uh, white has to play few more moves yeah i'm not checkmate now i can play, continue the game and uh, that was yeah. amazing and then you went on to even hold this game which yes. is which is uh, a big result for your team i think this is what uh, there's a lot of fighting spirit in 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 you yes uh, you keep fighting all the time yeah well, i think the last few games i got was position out of the opening like continuously and uh, i was feeling bad i, I okay somehow i think uh, was able to thank you Yeah no I I'm sure and I think uh, this is something which is very unique to both of, both you and Prag uh, in fact when he reached 2700 I asked a lot of people what they felt about him and many of them said his fighting spirit stands out and I think this is something that you both have worked on together Yeah like if you get worst position out of 10 moves every time then you have to fight back some <laughs> I think that's how you get back this True true Next game was a smooth one though against Abdullah Khayala. I think uh, you played a nice move here, Queen C4, which kind of gave you a very big. Yeah, I also like this move, Rook C3. I'm just waiting. I might double the piece. Like I can go Queen C4 directly. Then here she can take and play Rook F8 directly. So I played this little move, Rook C3, uh, like Rook F8. Can be. Hmm. But then Rook C3 here. Now she can also do this, right? Now ah. I have like rook a one, rook a three. I can double. Ah, and then you will just double and win this pawn, or or put a lot of pressure. Yeah. Hmm. Got it. So that was a deep thing, and then that was quite a quick win for you. And I think from a visual perspective, the next one was the most beautiful uh, game, right? Yes, this one was really a favorite game of that tournament. Yeah, I think I played well uh, from the opening, like the way I put my pieces and 
all this b6 x6 spoon like little little till what point was it your prep or it was already <laughs> This night of three was itself a, like I night of three is not very common. Uh, I just know I have to take on c three and play d six and black is just fine, like with normal developing. Mm. I didn't know c five uh, move, but I just pl played like normal moves at night of six and. Ah, and the key. I mean, one point is that this is getting <laughs> met by queen f four. Got it. Okay, so you played very logically here. You got all your pieces out. Had the center and then pushed with e4. And then very soon we reached this position where you found this very strong move, knight b4. Yes. And she had to move the rook away. Maybe she could have played this. I don't know. I, think, uh, I can take on c3. So. You know, I was analyzing this because take, 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 and very surprisingly, after rook d four, rook d four. But it's still, I mean, okay for you, right? After something like knight c six or knight c two, knight c six. Yeah, I think I should be the because of my piece activity. Yeah. I think I should be the one. Sure, you are. You are better here. So, she played knight d2, and you had seen this, yes, beforehand? Oh, uh, no, I think uh, like when I played knight before, I saw knight d2, and I can move back the queen. Like the rook is still attacked, and I'm not I'm not losing anything. Yeah, my pieces are support, well placed and support. Like when she played knight d2, I realized, okay, I have this queen d4 option. Beautiful. Takes, yeah. takes, takes. So now you have a rook and a, a piece for a queen, but now you. At this move, which is very important, rook is hanging, played here, and you took. And the nice thing about your position is that this knight protects this knight, so it's all very stable. Yeah, everything is supported. There is no back rank issue. Like all the pieces <laughs> are active, and yeah, it was so nice. Yeah, no problems uh, in your position at all. And then the knight started do, do weaving their magic forks everywhere. He can't take the rook knight f3. So. And she resigned. Yeah, this was, this must have been a special. Is this your favorite game from the tournament? Yes, uh, definitely. Like, uh, also, like, after playing few bad games in a row, this felt good. Uh, and also, like, after the game, Viritana said, like, I played well with this queen c7, b6 move, like, little trick moves. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, more than the result, like, when players like him tell, like, you played well, good game, like, this gives a, like, this is a, such, a, such a happy feeling. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, this was the next game, very, very positional game, I would say. Uh, did you feel like the position was closer to a draw than a win for you or how did you assess? Yeah, definitely I have some chances because of my king activity and the this pawns are weak. Like the pawn was on b7, it's different with b5 and <laughs> it could be lost any time. Uh, yeah, I did not think about so much about the result. Definitely I have chance, like anything can happen. So I just kept playing. Right, and she played queen b8. What what would be her idea behind queen b8? And she was uh, low on pluck. I think she made it in one or two two seconds. Like she didn't know what to do, and I think she, I think just played. Did you realize like b4 is the killer move here, or I mean, uh, you just played it as a good positional decision? No, okay. I saw bishop c6 e4 was there. Uh, if queen c6 b4 was coming. So, this b4 felt natural, like b4 and the pawns are getting fixed. Uh, so, b4, I just played b4 and, and now push. I'm ready to take on c6. So. Then you will take this and also soon b5 will fall. So, take, take and then c3. Now you have two pawn, pawns up and you, you converted this. So, another nice win here. This was in the... Actually, in this game, there is one... Amazing tactic, like in the middle game. Uh, wow! Please show me at which which point. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, can go back, like starting from knight f five. I think. Maybe we can we can also ask our viewers to guess the move. Knight f. Um, ah, knight f five. Yeah. Okay. okay uh, the knight f five. I spent some time. Like we can go forward. Like okay, knight f five. I spent some time whether to go for the structure or not. 
then i thought they should be better for me and went like 97 94 when you thinking of it uh, yeah i played all the best moves here uh, look at for niger ियो इज इट Okay, I'm uh, not using an engine for this one. So rook g7, bishop g7, f6, bishop f, and bishop h6. Does that work, or am I just yes. too naive? No, yeah, yeah, yes, it's right. Like yeah, rook g7, bishop g7, and f6. Uh, I saw like this knight f5 move. I don't know, like if knight f5 is knight f5, there will be rook g8. Yeah, you are like in the rook g8, like bishop g7, f6, and knight f5. Oh, so that is also a key line to see, right? Okay, uh, here. But yeah, then F G seven should be okay. Yeah, F G seven, King G eight, and the position you have to evaluate and go for this. Mm. And like, you didn't like this position, or? Yeah, somehow I did not spend enough time. I but think. isn't isn't Queen G six coming here? Yeah, I can play Queen G six, and Black is supposed to go Queen D seven, like ninety three. Yeah, because he can't take. Uh, because she can't take. Is... This is lost. So... Yeah, this is a. Uh, Like I played in the middle game, like all the best moves, like maneuvering the rook, playing h4, bishop e3, everything. And if I had continued with this, it would have been very nice. Uh, mm. And here I saw the engine now, and it suggests the move rook a7. Yes. Which is very nice. Wow, that would be a crazy game. Yeah, I don't know what is this like queen a7, queen f5, yeah, and just bishop d3. So. Yes, this looks over. The bishops are just too powerful. Ah, so this was a very nice tactic. Thank, thanks for sharing this. Ah, uh, was very cool. And then I think the last. I mean, we saw already the last round game at the beginning. So this is the penultimate round, and you are facing uh, Osturk, Kubra Osturk. Actually, all your opponents are strong players, right? In this tournament, you had very good opposition to face. Yeah, all of them were title players like WGM mm. and IMF. So. And you played the Benko Gambit. What was your motivation? Uh, I think in one of the other blacks also, I was hoping for Benko and he did not come. Mm. Uh, this game, I saw some like my opponent did not face it for a long time, so I thought I just play and uh, <laughs> I just played it. Yeah. Nice, because uh, I see that Benko Gambit is not played very often in, uh, at at a good. high level yeah, top level yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but but i don't understand why is it like already the computers are because i used to play when i was playing but now is it like the engines already give white a very clear edge yeah there are many ways to play well, like where white has a simple edge and uh, yeah after all in the bank we are always bottom down yeah, so right uh, so you you did take a risk by playing this opening were you surprised when your opponent made this move g4 uh, no actually she was Preparing for a king side attack, like with this h4 earlier, queen d2. This was this is more like a my game in the last game, yeah. This mm. structure, my king is between. Yes, she the wants to can, come can here anytime. Right. Yeah. So this g4, I I saw this coming anytime. That's why I think earlier, like I played this queen a6 move. Maybe ah. somewhere my queen can come into the game. Yeah, you played queen. I think it's a very interesting thing that when an attacker is going to get attacked, like an attacking player. They always are very careful with the okay. ideas like G four, right? Because you yeah, yeah, yourself would uh, want yes. to play it. So here you found a beautiful defense, which was Queen C eight, and I think that just kills our attack. Yeah, Queen C eight was very important to see, and yeah, yeah. Once you play, I think it's very difficult to say something for it. Yeah, and now just, I think she couldn't. Make sure, and she resigned here. You are completely better and winning the position. So that was your tournament, Vaishali. A very strong performance. Also puts you back about twenty four fifty. I think that's a nice feeling, no? That you were there, then you came back a little. Now you're back. Yeah, I lost uh, rating, uh, and yeah, I was. I'm very happy to get back there.
also i'm very happy or i was unbeaten yeah? like okay i had many losing losing games but uh, i was like a tournament where i played as grand prix in delhi where i did not win a single game to actually get to be unbeaten in some tournament it feels really good absolutely yes yeah. and uh, tell us a bit about your uh, work schedule also i think uh, prag mentioned to me that he was talking to you every day during this event uh, uh, what would be like would you also help him would he discuss more about your games and uh, how was it uh, yeah he was playing like we both almost finished our games in the same time and uh, in the evenings we would have a long calls discussing each other's games and i would tell the stories what what is happening in our team meetings and so on like uh, then we would briefly discuss what to do like we, okay i was not helping as in his opening preparation or something but he was definitely helping me like to decide with the openings and so on uh, yeah thanks to him also like uh, he has been a big support for me um, for sure for sure and how how was the celebration like when he crossed 2700 uh, did you guys uh, i'm sure you didn't celebrate so much you both were in the middle of tournaments but uh, how did it feel uh like i got to know that he crossed 2700 through i think chesvi said we i think so and uh, okay i was like uh, okay is he only crossing now uh, because he was at 27 like he was close to 27 for long time and uh, i did not realize that he didn't cross it yet mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it was it, it's a nice feeling yeah like after seeing after reading so much about like peaks and so on we it's a great thing i was feeling like mm-hmm. he has a lot of aim so it's i think the first step towards his journey and mm-hmm. it's amazing yeah yeah i also like how you said oh, you know i'm surprised he has not crossed 2700 <laughs> yeah he was uh, yeah i think he had like 2698 or something yes. during our vacancy uh, somewhere he was there and we did not think so much about it i think mm. it was same for our parents also like uh, uh, he was there for long time and for me personally i didn't realize that he didn't cross it yet so yes no but it was a big moment for indian chess yes. because now uh, you know we have eight players who have crossed 2700 the list is growing rapidly uh, yes. which is very very nice and um, you know even in the women's uh, of section of india there are a lot of players who are now crossed 2400 like if you see you are back to number 3 in india after hampi harika but you have uh, savita vantika uh, and many players who are who are doing really well now yeah many girls like i think we are doing well we are getting there right? hopefully uh, many more achievements yeah and many more gms will be created uh, before i let you go vaishali uh, a very quick look at your uh, world cup that you will now next play how happy are you with your uh, bracket because you are in the same bracket as the world champion Yes, I think okay. Any bracket, I think I'll be fine with it. I, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to get selected for the tournament because I didn't, I didn't play any qualifier tournaments or I didn't qualify and I also lost the rating, so I did not. I was not hoping to get to play, but uh, so I was so happy to see that I got selected for the tournament. And did you did you get a wild card or how was your selection? Uh, I I got some Olympiad quota from the Indian Federation. I don't know what was that. Okay. So, Yeah, I was very happy to see that. Check the email that I was selected for the tournament. Brilliant, and we are also very happy because if you see, you will most likely face Maria Muzichuk, and if you win, perhaps you would face Anna Muzichuk, yes. then maybe Ju Wenjun. So it's a very tough bracket that you have. Yeah, very strong players. Yeah, I'm very excited to play. This will be my second World Cup. Uh, so let's see. How, how was your first World Cup when you played? uh first one it was in 2021 i got no i won the first game i lost the second game and uh, it was over there and, but uh, i i mean the world cup atmosphere i really enjoyed it yeah all the women the, the i mean the, in 2021 it was uh, all the women and men players were in the same playing all and it was so amazing to to play the same all like you just see there like magnus would be passing the other side the other player would be passing like it was so amazing to be playing the same all right so yeah it was great Yeah, I mean, and also at that point we are just getting out of COVID. Uh, yes, that was so. my first one, like our first, like for Prague also. It was our first tournament post pandemic, and uh, uh, yeah, 
like okay i got knocked out and uh, prag was prag went to fifth round i think mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i was there and it was just amazing to follow the tournament yeah very nice and vaishali we wish you great uh, luck for the world cup we are going to follow your games and of course there are other 16 indians apart from you as well who will be there so it will be great fun but for now a big big congratulations for this amazing performance at the turkish league uh, well done